Welcome back to PSC Stack Buy. Today I want to talk with you about MSAL, the Microsoft Authentication Library, which is a library that helps developers to retrieve tokens to consume APIs secured with the Microsoft Identity Platform. I'm talking about APIs like the Microsoft Graph, for example, which is for sure the primary API you should consume through MSAL, as well as other Microsoft APIs like the SharePoint Online REST APIs or the Power BI APIs and so on and so forth as well as third-party APIs or APIs developed by yourself and secured in Azure Active Directory. MSAL is available in multiple development platforms and languages, like for example Microsoft.NET, JavaScript and TypeScript, Android, macOS and iOS, Python and Java. And why should you use an helper library to consume external APIs and to get an access token to consume external APIs? Well, first of all, because using an helper library, you can offload the maintenance and support of the authentication logic. Moreover, using such kind of helper library, you don't need to dig into the details of the open authorization protocol, and you can easily get access tokens as delegated access token or a only access token in order to consume external APIs. Moreover, the MSAL library provides a native cache for the retrieve tokens so that you can speed up the uh, running and the performance of your uh, custom developed application. In order to use MSAL, first of all, you need to include the package in your solution. And once you have done that, you can use a model based on the idea of having a builder. And through a builder, you can build a public uh, client application or a confidential client application object. The public client application targets those scenarios where you want to create a desktop or a mobile application, which will be executed on an end user device. And in there, you will retrieve delegated access token to behave in the name of the user while consuming the target API. The confidential client application on the other side has been defined to be used in websites, web applications, web APIs, demos, functions, and stuff like that, so that you will need to have typically an application-only access token, and it is called confidential client application because you can assume that you can store confidential information like a shared secret or a certificate that you will use to get the application-only access token. Whether you use the public client application or the confidential client application, you will have to register an application in Azure Active Directory and you will have to configure proper permissions, whether delegated or application-only permissions, to consume the target APIs that you want to use. So let's move to the demo environment and let's start playing with the public client application in a .NET solution. So, in order to use MSAL, first of all, we need to register an application in Azure Active Directory. And that's why I'm going here right now. Under App Registration, I can register an application. I can call it MSAL uh, uh, Public uh, Client uh, Demo, for example. And it will be an application targeting a single tenant, my current tenant. It can be also a multi-tenant application, if you like. Once I have created the application, I can store in a safe place the client ID as well as uh, the tenant ID, which will be uh, useful later on in order to consume uh, the Microsoft Identity Platform. Once I've done that, I need to go under API permissions and under uh, this section, I need to add the permission scopes that I want to have. So let's assume that I want to consume Microsoft Graph uh, and specifically with delegated permissions because we are using uh, the public client application, we are going to use that one. I want to consume the SharePoint Online sites in my tenant. And specifically, I want to be able to read uh, all of the sites uh, accordingly to the permissions of my currently connected user. So I will add this permission and as a tenant admin, I will grant uh, this permission uh, to my tenant. And now to my app in my tenant, sorry. So now my app uh, is configured from a, a permission point of view. I need to go under authentication and here I have to configure what the URL is for my application in order to make it possible for the client uh, um, OpenID Connect and Open Authorization flow to uh, properly run. So I will add a platform. This will be a mobile or a desktop application because I'm going to create uh, a console application. And as the uh, URL of my application, I will just provide HTTP local host. 
just for the sake of making a test in a console application. Once I've done that, I can switch to Visual Studio where I already created an empty, fresh, new console application. And there I will have to add a reference to the new get package of MSAL. So I can search for MSAL and the package is microsoft.identity.client. I will install the latest version at the time of this registration. And once I've done that, I can go back to my program CS. First of all, MSAL is built with a synchronous in mind. So I will define my main method as asynchronous and I will return a task as the result. So once I've done that, I can create in my application few variables. First of all, we need to create a variable for the public client application. So that's the public client application for my uh, uh, solution, for my consumer application. Then I will have to save the client ID and the tenant ID in order to be able to use them to access the uh, target endpoint, the target Azure Active Directory, and then the target API. And these information are those that I stored before while creating the application in Azure Active Directory. Once I've done that, I also need to configure a variable called authority, which will be a URI, which will represent, uh, uniquely represent the target tenant or the fact that I'm targeting multiple tenants with my application. Right now, I'm targeting a specific tenant, the one with the ID that I just copied. So once I've done that, I can configure the uh, public client variable, and I will do that using the public client application builder. First of all, I will say that I want to create a new builder for my client ID. Then I will say that I want to use as the authority uh, the one that I just configured. And moreover, I want to use as the redirect URI for my application, the one that I configured earlier. So HTTP localhost. Once I've done that, I can build my client application and I will get back an instance of the, of the iPublic client application interface. Then when I want to get a, a token, I need to specify the permission scopes that I want to have in the token. So let me declare a variable called scopes, which will be an array of strings and which will contain the uh, permission scopes that I want to have. Those permission scopes are available under Azure Active Directory. If I go back to the API permission section, and for example, I select this permission, here I can see what the permission scope is. Let me copy this value, and this will be the content of the unique item in the array of scopes that I want to use. Okay, now I need to make a request for the token. So I will need to get a variable of type authentication result, which I can call result, and which will be the result of an asynchronous call to public client. And I will use the acquire interactive token, acquire token interactive, which will prompt the user with a UI to get the authentication in place for the permission scope that I want to get. And I will execute asynchronously this method. Once I've done that, I will get back an access token, which I can write on the console window just for the sake of showing you the output. But I want to do more. With the access token that I just got, I want to consume SharePoint Online effectively. So let me create an HTTP client variable, which will be a new instance of HTTP client type in <coughs> system.net. And once I have this object, I also create an HTTP request, which will represent a request to the Microsoft Graph API. So it will be a new HTTP request message. This request message will be for the HTTP method get, and I want to target the URL of my uh, SharePoint Online API through Microsoft Graph. So for example, it will be HTTPS graph.microsoft.com version 1.0 of the Microsoft Graph. I will specify that I want to target the Scythe API and specifically I want in my current tenant to get the root set collection of my <coughs> SharePoint Online tenant. So once I've done that, I also need to configure in the HTTP request that I want to use a, a, a HTTP header, a request HTTP header of type authorization, which will include the access token as the bearer authorization token. So let me do that, request.headers.authorization, and it will be the uh, authentication header value, an instance of the authentication header value with an header of type bearer and with a value which will be the content of my result.access token so that I will place the uh, 
Open Authorization Access Token as the bearer authorization token in the request. So now I can make the request and get a response. So I will say HTTP client send a sync and I will send the HTTP request. Of course, the send a sync is an asynchronous method, so I need an await in the uh, method invocation. And once I've done that, I can evaluate uh, the response. First of all, I can say if the response uh, is successful or not. And if it is successful, I can then say, okay, so let's write on the console the response dot content dot read a string async. And again, I need an await because this is an asynchronous method. On the contrary, in case of any failure, I will simply write the content of the response, but I will first say, okay, console foreground color, let's say the color will be red. So, and again, console write line, and I will write still the content of the response. So, let me build and run this application. It builds F5, here is the console application. And here is the web browser. I have the interactive login. I will log in with my account. Now I'm logged in and I can go back to the application. And here you can see in the console application, I get the access token as well as the JSON response for the content of my uh, site, root site collection. So really simple, really straightforward. Like always, Thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it interesting and I'm really looking forward to seeing you next week still talking about msil for.net and using the confidential client application. And remember, subscribe to this channel. Thank you.